Bitte weigern. Today is the Nativity of St. John the Baptist. He was not the light, but he came for a witness to the light that all might believe in this true light which enlighteneth every man which cometh into the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Last night we left the bonfire which burned during the night. And that is always our Lord's way, that he wants his light to outshine the darkness. And today we come to church for the special Mass. And the three holy Masses are all celebrated today in order to honor the birthday of the dawn, the herald of the day, St. John the Baptist, our Lord's precursor. If we honor all of the saints, we must especially honor St. John the Baptist. Amongst those born of women, there hath not arisen a greater than John the Baptist. So we revere him, and we thank him, and we ask him to intercede for us, as we do with all the saints, beginning with the Queen of all saints, Our Lady, but especially today we have to remember that difficult part about honoring a saint, to imitate him. How are you and I going to imitate St. John the Baptist? Well, we have to let our Lord's light shine through us so that every man coming into this world, as the last gospel says, may truly be enlightened by the light of the Holy Ghost. That's the truth. Very time. The truth which sets us free. Our Lord's precursor, his cousin, St. John the Baptist, has to inspire us to be forerunners of Christ, to get the way ready for Christ to come into souls, families, society, to reign as king. We have to be his prophets. A prophet is someone, not just who predicts the future, but who tells God's truth right here and now and the consequences to souls if they won't listen to it. We have to be our Lord's light to others. Greeting us in the paper this morning after last night's beautiful vigil of the light and the blessed fire, the sad news of some poll or another, that about 70% of Catholics, of the Novus Ordo, of course, but 70% who claim the name of Catholics say, well, one religion is about as good as another, and they're all good to get us into heaven. Lies from the prince of darkness. We really do have our work cut out for us. But remember, John the Baptist came so he could point out the coming of the light, our Lord's light. The light of our Lord's beauty shines still today on all of the heathen and all the pagans in our own time. Our Lord is now, since the ascension, enthroned on the right hand of his Father. But everything about our Lord, which you could see or hear or touch, remember the other John, St. John the Evangelist, who, write, who writes the last gospel for us. The other John says that what we have seen with our eyes and heard with our ears and touched with our hands. That's our Lord, God incarnate. Well, all of that light, where does it shine now? It's passed into the Catholic Church. It shines in the sacred mysteries. First of all, the holy sacrifice of the Mass, the blessed sacrament, in all of the Church's teachings, in all of her beautiful ways and doctrines. It shines in the church, in her magisterium, her teaching authority. And so this dark world of ours, moth-like, is always being drawn to the light. Even those, St. John says, who like darkness better than light, are drawn to the light. But sometimes, like moths, it's just for their own uh, destruction. The Holy Mass, the sacraments, the Church's teaching, and the life 
of good Catholics. All of these prove that it's not all darkness yet. We're not quite yet plunged into the night. Not yet. Our Lord wills to live still today among men. We have seen his glory, the glory, as it were, of the only begotten of the Father. You see our Lord's light, then, in the mystical sacrifice of the altar, about to be enacted this morning with great solemnity for this feast day. You see it in all of the martyrs. Last night's bonfire reminded us of St. Joan of Arc, and so many martyrs who died and are still dying today for our holy faith. You see it in the hidden life of monks and nuns whom you don't see, and you see it in the revealed light of the married folk who live the martyrdom of their vows, of virgins who keep their, their, their lights trimmed, their lamps burning all through the darkness all night long. These are all ways for us to imitate St. John the Baptist, the friend of the bridegroom. He's the one who points out the coming of the Lamb of God. Most of all with St. John today, let us ask him for the grace not just to honor him and to ask him to pray for us, but to imitate him. Because it's a dark, dark world, but our Lord needs you and you and you and you to be little light, fresh lights, if you will, to point to the coming of the true light, which enlighteneth every man which cometh into this world. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.